Good morning, Pod B students. Today we're going to talk about scarcity. So we've already talked about scarcity quite a few times in class already this first week. You've probably heard one of your teachers mention the idea of scarcity. And that is why economics is a science of making choices, because uh, what we want is scarce. There's not enough to go around for everyone. So if you've ever heard the Rolling Stones song, you can't always get what you want, uh, that's a real concept, right? If I asked you right now to list 10 things that you wanted, uh, whether that was a nap or it was to go shopping or to win the lottery or to get a new car, you could probably come up with a list of wants relatively easily. The problem is because our wants are unlimited, um, there's just not enough of everything to go around. The resources are limited. So our wants are unlimited, but our resources, our time, our money, our effort, our ability are limited. And because our wants always exceed our resources is why we have to make choices. And that's essentially the concept of scarcity. Uh, this concept that we have all of these wants, um, but our money and our time, our resources are limited. So goods and services are scarce. Uh, when we look at, or when an economist looks at scarcity, uh, they're looking at goods and services. It's hard for us as consumers to think of anything being scarce because you go into a store and there seems to be unlimited resources around you. There's, there's goods and physical objects everywhere for sale. But again, because our time and our money and our effort, our ability to purchase those things or the time to use or consume those goods and services is limited, is why there is scarcity there. So when we're talking about goods, we're talking about physical objects that are produced for sale. Um, goods can be cars, clothing, food, um, etc. Anything that you can purchase that is a physical object, paper, pencils, the desks, your cell phones, all of those are goods. Okay, um, the idea of a service is going to be work or an activity that's done for us by someone else. Teachers, doctors, um, your hairstylist, a bus driver, a plumber, a nurse, a police officer, they're all providing a service. And again, oftentimes we take that for, for granted. We think that those services are unlimited, um, but they aren't. Okay, those resources um, as well are scarce. So cell phones are a good example. It might seem like cell phones are an unlimited good because almost everyone has one and there's constantly new phones being updated or released, but the material and the labor that's needed to make them uh, is scarce, which makes those phones scarce as well. So um, again, going back to this concept of goods and services, um, those resources, land, labor, machines, materials, those things are scarce. Um, and we'll be talking more about factors of production in the next section of chapter two. Another thing to remember is the concept of a shortage versus scarcity. And I've mentioned this in classes already, so you might have already heard this, but remember the idea of scarcity is forever where a shortage tends to be temporary. So when you hear someone talking about a shortage, it's something that you've probably already experienced at some point. You've gone to buy something, the, the new iPhone, maybe it's a new video game, maybe it's concert tickets, and it's out. They've run out of it. That is a shortage of something. A lack of something that people want is a shortage. Um, Shortages can occur for a lot of different reasons. It might be because it's really trendy right now or it's a fad, everybody wants one. Um, influencers are talking about it and it kind of increases that demand. It makes everyone want that thing and maybe production is slow and your retail outlets run out of it. Um, shortages could also be caused by war or natural disasters or conflict where they've there's been a disruption of the production or movement of goods. Um, natural disasters like hurricane season, for example, um, drive shortages all of the time. People prepare for hurricane season by buying a lot of bottled water or supplies. Um, so stores might completely sell out of them um, and there might be a shortage where those people have to rely on some type of donation. 
Again, typically shortages are temporary. A shortage is going to end once production is resumed and new sources of supply are found. In contrast, scarcity is going to be forever. No matter how we use our resources, no matter how much we manage our time, we manage our money, we manage our effort, there's never enough for everyone at the same time. So again, remember scarcity is forever. And because of the fact, if we go back to that point that we're just going to keep hammering home, because our wants are unlimited, but our resources are limited, our time, our money, our effort, our ability, there's not enough to meet the demand of all of those unlimited wants, which is why we have to make choices. So as we continue to talk in this class and in the, especially in this unit, we're going to talk about what happens when we make those choices. What do we leave behind? What are those trade-offs? Um, and how do we look at that from an economic point of view? Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you next time.